Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Ask IoT video series presented by IoT for All, the number one publication and resource for the Internet of Things. I'm your host, Ryan Chacon. On today's episode, we have Abner Ben Bassat, the president and CEO of Platain. They are a leading provider for industrial IoT and AI-based optimization solutions for advanced manufacturing. Um, and we're going to focus on how industrial IoT and AI together can improve sustainability in manufacturing and reduce waste. So talking a lot about how AI is playing a role in industrial IoT how AI-powered industrial IoT solutions can help improve sustainability, leading use cases, um, game-changing technology that's kind of a part of the IoT space that's really helping with that industry, as well as how smart manufacturing can save money and the environment at the same time. So all in all, fantastic conversation that I think can get a lot of value out of. So please enjoy this episode of the Ask IoT video series. Welcome, Abner. Thanks for uh, being here and taking some time to chat with me today. I really appreciate it. Sure, Ryan. Thank you. It's, uh, it's great to be back, and I appreciate Absolutely. the conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, no, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad you're here again. Um, looking forward to kind of, or I've been looking forward to, to getting another chat set up. And I think our conversation today, the topics we kind of have set up are going to be um, going to be good. So we want to kind of focus on industrial IoT and AI and how it's kind of improving sustainability in, in different industries, particularly manufacturing and, and waste reduction and things like that. But before we get into it, why don't you go ahead and give a quick introduction about yourself and the company for those who may have not kind of heard the previous content we've done together. Uh, definitely, sure. It's a pleasure. So again, uh, my name is Abner. I'm the CEO of Platane. We are a software company uh, specializing in AI applications for manufacturing, for the manufacturing sectors. Our suite of solutions are digital assistants, apps that work on the production floor in the hands of the production team, operators, supervisors, management, uh, helping them during the day um, make better decisions, identify problems, and, and resolve them. So really, when we say digital assistance, we mean uh, an application in the hands of the users. But mm -hmm. what's driving that in the background is a very fundamental, powerful core of AI capabilities, okay. which gets a lot of data off the production floors, multiple sources, IoT included, then crunches everything, looks at the big picture, and then helps the various team members, planners, operators, warehouse management, et cetera, et cetera, right, make right. better day-to-day -day decisions. Fantastic. So one of the... Um... One of the first questions I had for you actually ties into kind of the end there when you're mentioning the AI component. Um, AI, obviously, as a whole, is 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 something that is playing a very active role these days in IoT, um, in helping IoT solutions be more successful, helping data be better for, for organizations. And as it connects to the industrial IoT side of things, from your perspective, how is AI really playing a role in industrial IoT? Sure. So, you know, from our perspective, um, industrial IoT, amongst other segments, has a lot of data. And, and IoT uh, does create a lot of data. You know, we see a lot of the robotics and controllers and, and other, um, let's say, IoT capability sensors and the like. So that's been established, and that's already a huge step forward. You know, 5, 10, 20 years ago, we weren't right. There. Now, the question today really is, what do you do with the data? And this is a very pragmatic question, but also a very business oriented question, because we want to put the data to use in a way that creates business value. Mm -hmm. And here we've seen our experiences that AI uh, as one technology, but a very powerful one, can bring a lot of value from that data. And this is really the, the bigger picture. So in terms of IoT, yes, the IoT is fundamentally a critical source of data, mm -hmm. but the AI takes the next level up and puts the data to use. Makes total sense. Yeah, I think it's. Um, I think people are becoming more and more um, understanding of the value it provides. But I think for many years it was kind of unsure of actually how to do the implementation and what what does AI even really mean in the industry and kind of what they're working on. Um, and so if we take this one step further and talk about how solutions in the industrial space are powered or have AI elements kind of in them, how is that? that element, the AI element, helping improve things like sustainability and, and other situations like that? Okay, so first, you know, let's not separate sustainability from uh, good business practice and, and okay. you know, operational excellence. Right. Um, a lot of the things that are, you know, sustainable, we're not only doing this for the good of, of Mother Earth, but we see a lot of companies finding straight business value in them. So we'll get to sure. that. 
But when we look at that, really, what does AI do? And what we've been able to do and others, first is, you know, make predictions. Something bad is going to happen. In terms of manufacturing, we are about to have a quality issue. We are about to have a production delay. We're about to have, a, a, you know, we're about to waste material or scrap a part. That's a very powerful capability. But what we're also doing, and this is a higher level really, is not just alerting or predicting a problem, but actually preventing it or providing the users with a solution. So instead of saying, hey, Ryan, production line number seven is going to have a problem, we're predicting material failure or part delay. We're also going to give you the solution of how to prevent or minimize the problem to begin with. Mm-hmm. And then perhaps propose an alternative schedule or, schedule or an alternative material allocation or anything of that sort that helps the overall factory become more efficient. Right. Now, how does it tie into sustainability? When you look into that area, first of all, there's a lot of focus and great and important focus on recycling. Very important. Let's take all the waste from the process and find a way to recycle it so that we can put it to other use, at least part of it. Very important. But that's one aspect. I think we have an opportunity at a bigger, more important one. If we reduce the waste to begin with, then there is less to recycle. So in other words, if recycling gives you 10, 20 cents on the dollar, by reducing the waste altogether, you save not only the dollar per se, you actually save more. You save regulatory costs, landfill costs, and and all of that association with getting rid of the waste, Mm -hmm. plus the added benefit of sustainability for, for all of us. So here, really, the opportunity here, when we look strictly at the production line, is not not around recycling. Recycling comes sometimes during the process and mostly afterwards. Right. Bigger question here is reduction, waste reduction. How can we use less material? How can we scrap less parts? Which, of course, turns very quickly into dollars and cents, uh, above and beyond all the sustainability benefits. Are some of those decisions made earlier on in the process? Because you mentioned how a lot, some of the reduction of waste can happen or the recycling pieces kind of happen towards the end. Is What has to happen leading up to that in order to put the company in a position to where this is, you know, they can they can see more benefits from, from use cases and solutions like this? Right. Well, first, I mean, they need to be in that mindset. Okay. Sometimes it's inherent, you know, people want to do good have the uh, orientation or awareness for uh, sustainability. And sometimes they get the extra nudge from government regulations and and any other, or maybe even their customers. The OEM will require them to act more sustainably. That's great. And that's probably the first place to start. But often, it, like I said, it parallels or overlaps other goals for uh, reduction in cost or operational excellence. You know, listen, this whole, the rest, recent two years with the supply chain challenges, getting materials has just become so much more difficult. Mm. So irrespective of sustainability, companies need to get a better handle on their materials. Sure. And if they've just made a part and they scrap it, and now they need more material, but now they right. need to make, wait six months for that. So they're never going to deliver on time. So these two areas are married. And to your question, you know, before applying any technology, namely AI, you need to identify the problem you want to solve whether that's driven by the inherent goodness of a sustainability practice, by yeah. regulation, or simply because you need to run a, a more profitable um, operation. Perfect. Okay, great. Now, if we take a slight step back and look at the different elements of IoT as a whole that are contributing mm-hmm. to helping make, um, um, I guess, making a lot of this possible. And I guess what I'm asking is what parts of IoT um, make this kind of a game changer for sustainability, for the manufacturing industry and things like that? Right. Well, definitely. IoT plays a huge role here uh, because it's a main driver of data. Um, If we, as AI people, as an AI company, want to create a better schedule or, or create a better materials plan, we cannot do this out of thin air and without context. Sure. And, and a lot of this context is given to us by IoT, by sensors or, or machine controllers or otherwise giving us data. Let me give you a couple of examples and use cases. Let's say we need to um, just you know 
schedule and plan and operate the factory. Okay, okay. great. So let's say we have a great algorithm, and, and we do, that creates a plan and a schedule. But as we all know, if that plan was created at 8 a.m., you know, by 8.02, something's going to go wrong. Right. Some, something bad has happened, or maybe something good, a new job, a rush order came in, and mm -hmm. it's all good. But how do you even know that it happened? How do you know that machine number seven is off? IoT will tell you that. How right. do you know that the material for job number five that's supposed to be here at eight is actually at the other side of the building? IoT can tell that too. Okay. So IoT automates a lot of that um, data acquisition right. and create a very um, vivid, real-time picture for us, for our AI, to understand what's happening. And then we can predict what's going to happen and certainly create and offer the solution. So here, the, the inherent automation and digitization of, of IoT data uh, for us is, is creating a mass and op massive opportunity to improve uh, manufacturing uh, operations, KPIs, in any way you look at it. And outside of what you've already mentioned, how else is, um, in, in the smart manufacturing space, how, how is manufacturing in this way, adding these IoT elements into it, how else is this helping companies save money and generally the environment as a whole? Right. I think, you know, if you're asking about IoT, right, then, uh, or smart manufacturing as a whole, then absolutely. When, when we talk to our customers, we typically ask them, you know, what's on your mind? And they'll come from, uh, we need to reduce costs or save money or increase our profitability or increase our production rates or all the above. Right. And, 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 and some of them will come plainly saying, listen, we need to become more sustainable because that's our decision. These are our values or because our OEM told us to be so. Um, now, this is where you start. You need to start with a problem statement. What are you trying to solve? Mm. And then, okay, let's look at your production. Where are you, um, if we're talking about uh, reduction of material waste? Material waste is very costly, right? You're throwing away money, good money that you pay for. You need to pay someone else to pick it up and recycle or, or um, use uh, landfills. Sometimes there's a regulatory fine. And then after you did all that, you need to wait, wait two, three, four, nine more months to get new material. Okay. So inherently, that's a, that's a nice example to show the alignment of operational effectiveness with uh, sustainability. And then certainly, yes, if you know what you have in stock, what are the conditions of your material? Some of them are uh, temperature sensitive or, or need specific uh, humidity environments, environmental environments. Or where do they even locate it? Where are they in the factory? What's right. my stock? If you measure these, if you track these manually, then sooner or later, people are going to make mistakes and you'll be off. If okay. you use IoT, then you have good, clear, real-time visibility, no mistakes, and a much uh, better handle on your overall process. And one of the last questions I want to ask you before I let you go here is, what does the implementation look like? Like, how does somebody get started down this journey? Like, they're interested, they're kind of listening to this, and they like realize that this is something that can, bringing AI into their industrial business, into their industrial use case, you know, they, they want to reduce waste, they want to kind of improve sustainability, they want to reduce cost. How does, how does somebody get started on this kind of path? Sure. Well, I'm really glad you asked the question. I mean, and part of the answer is in your question. Where do you start? First of all, state clearly what is it that you're trying to do. Right. And in your question, Ryan, you said, okay, I want to reduce material waste. Great. Now, then we really look at the problem and how we solve it. And let's, you know, let's say our company has the solution for that. Uh, we know the problem, we have the solution, and then we start mapping out, well, what is the data that we need? Okay, we're going to get the inventory data from ERP. We're going to get temperature sensors, temperature data from IoT sensors. Uh, we're going to get uh, bomb data from PLM. Okay, now we have the data and we know what to deploy and we configure the system, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the preparation stage. What are you trying to solve? What's the solution for that? And let's say, what, what's the data needed and let's, let's get it. Right. Uh, by the way, in some cases, let's say the company does not have the temperature sensors. Okay, great, let's get them. But at this point, we know exactly what we're getting. We know which vendor to go get them mm. from, use their expertise and all of that. And now in terms of the deployment itself, we really advocate and recommend a gradual deployment. Okay. We don't want to go all in day one. 
what you want to do is create some kind of a roadmap, a plan. Let's right. start with line number one. Let's do this for a couple of months. Let's see everything works and then expand to line two, three, four, and to building number two, building number three, and do this very gradually. Okay. It's an IT statement, but it's also, let's say, uh, an employee buy-in, an HR statement. Um, and above all of that, really, there's also the expansion of scope. Hmm. Let's start with digitization. Let's see where things are. Great. We have a good handle on that. Let's uh, kick it up a notch. Let's start making predictions. Let's get the team used to these predictions. Okay, right. now they're starting to accept that. Let's add the optimization. And at that point, okay. everything's digital. I'm telling people if everything's on track or not, or not going to be. And then right. I offer the solution in a way that the process is complete. So okay. what you see here is a very gradual and moderate approach. Fantastic. And for our audience out there who wants to learn more, kind of not just about what you all are doing, but maybe follow up on questions and comments about kind of this this topic, um, what's the best way they can do that? Um, well, certainly they're welcome to reach out to us. Our website is www.platane.com. You see the uh, spelling behind me, P L A T A I N E. Also, welcome to email me, Avner, A V N E R, at platane.com. Happy to get your feedback, your questions. Always happy to help and chat. Perfect. Well, Avner, thank you so much again for taking the time to be on uh, one of our shows. Um, it's always great to have you and look forward to hopefully doing more content again in the future. Super, Ryan. Appreciate it. It's a great show. Always enjoy it. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching that episode of the Ask IoT video series. I hope you found a lot of value in it. If you did, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it helps others find it and make sure that you get the latest episodes as soon as they become available. Other than that, if you have any questions or topics that you would like us to cover in this series, please leave them in the comments or shoot us an email at hello at iotforall.com. Other than that, thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.